Welcome, this is where nerds come to learn things. If it's your first time here, click on the subscribe button and on the bell icon to get notifications about new videos. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy it. Welcome to another mailbag. Now, I've tweaked myself a little bit now. I've currently got the air conditioning turned off, so you can't complain about the noise and the air con. I'm going to end up sweating very shortly, so hopefully it doesn't take too long to get through the mail. Uh, got remote control, so this makes it a bit better. Tweaking my setup a little bit. Big box, I've got actually no idea what's in here. Uh, it's going to be a surprise to all of us, I think. I'm trying to figure out where to start. It's all been crumpled up, it's all squashed here and collapsed in. See that on there? It's not looking good, like it's been dropped on the end. Hopefully it doesn't matter, but like I said, I don't actually know what's in it yet. Let's have a look. Ooh. Two white boxes, which also look a bit crushed. Excellent. I think I know what this is. Power cord. New Zealand one with the correct insulation on there. If I do any close up stuff, I'll um, I'll do it over on the bench here afterwards. So don't worry if you think you can't see it, I'll, I'll do it again closer up. Bags, which I need to find out how to get into. Where's the zip? There we go. So it's two of the things which are the same. This has actually arrived very fast, I'm quite surprised. I only ordered these last week. A couple of power cables here. Wrong plug, wrong plug, but that's why they've supplied these ones anyway, so they actually do have the correct ones. Little power adapter, 12 volt, 2.5 amp, and this is what has arrived. Studio light. Now, um, when I did the last mailbag, it was a bit dark. I didn't like the lighting, like right now, actually. Um, so I'm probably going to pause this in a second when I've checked this one out and set one of these lights up or both of these lights up or something. And you can see what the lighting comparisons. You can see the reflection right here, which is from the window. It's reflecting off. Um, I've got ceiling lights on and stuff like that. I've got a light over there, which is shining on me a little bit, but not much. So that's why I've got these. Now, aluminium construction. It's all very nice. Got a wing nut thing on there. Yep, little threaded. I'll, I'll do a close-up on here. I'll set one of these up and I'll actually leave one unset and I'll put it on the bench and look at it after. So I can take two batteries on the back there as well. And it's got um, luminescence and Kelvin settings. And it's got a digital display. So again, we'll take a close look on the, on the uh, bench there. Set the positive, that's always nice. And in here, get one out, will be stands. It's actually very similar to the mount I'm using for my camera right now, actually. It looks very similar. Yeah, it looks very similar. No, it's slightly different. Slightly different. I think this is a copy of that one. Actually, that's a good stand. So, anyway, so it's got a mount on the end here, threaded on the end there. Quarter inch for camera mounts. But it's got this, this is designed to have this screw on. So I can always use it for camera mount as well, which is handy. So I can go on there. I'll, set, I'll go and set this up and I'll come back. And I'll come back afterwards as well on the bench and we'll have a close look at it. Where's your mic on? Okay, after a short interlude, I've got one of the lights set up here on a stand. It's about two feet from the camera, just to one side. I'm trying to compensate for the shadow from the window there. So maybe you can see a difference between before and after. I don't know. Um, I've got a set at 90% intensity and at 5,400 Kelvin, apparently. The LCD display on the back actually tells you what the Kelvin value is. Obviously it's got, um, I can see it, so in the, in the mesh of LEDs, it's actually got two colours of LED in there. This is obviously mixes the two to get the different Kelvin values. It's pretty bright, I have to say. Um, it's at 90%. I don't like to run things flat out, so I'll never use 100% of the stuff. always turn down a bit so they last. I just want to give you some quick information here. It's supposed to be 1650 lumen, 120 degree coverage, uh, 15 watts, and say 3200 to 5600 Kelvin. And the size 
263 by 263 by 40 mil. So we'll, we'll look at it closely on the bench in a second. I'm going to put everything up on here, then I'll come back afterwards and shoot it and mix it in. Okay, so here's the light in the bag. So this is as it comes, as you saw in the other part of the video. We'll take a closer look. The bag is um, holds all the charge and stuff in, in that pocket there as well. You can see that because of the, the lighting. There's a pocket outside, and there's obviously where the light goes in. And this is what comes with. So there's the power supply, um, a couple of cables it comes with. Obviously, I, I got the um, New Zealand version came with it as well. As a I chuck that in too, which is here. So I'll put those cables to one side so I shall get this hooked up and I will power it up and have a look okay so here's the light plugged in the power haven't, haven't tried turning this one on yet we'll see what happens now on the front I'll just cover actually it's got this diffuser panel which actually will slide out turn upside down it will kind of slide put that knob out of the way and actually so you can take the diffuser out if you want and actually have a good look at the panel so that's exactly what we're going to do you can actually see the different color LEDs so that's an orangish or well, that's a yellowish kind of um, gel on the front of them, so it's obviously for different uh, Kelvin ratings and UEDs, and it mixes them together to get different uh, values. So it's pretty standard. Um, I was trying to follow the traces around, it's a bit hard to see, but maybe you can see it if I get the light on it right. Maybe you can. And it's got these catches at the side, so this catch here actually it will lift up, and there's one on this side as well. I know this can lift up. Which means once that is lifted, you can't actually get the fuse to fall out. So that's a nice little feature, I suppose. Also, you can tip the thing around in this frame. You can angle it. You know, do, you know, face it upwards if you want to get light for the ceiling. Here is the actual bracket parts. You can see in there is just a standard nut, which we should just clamp onto that shaft on the on a tripod. Very similar to the one I'm, my camera is normally mounted on when I'm used to doing stuff. So it's a two stage, that's fixed onto there. That one telescopes, telescopes out of there. And then this one will telescope out of here. There you go. It's a bit jammed up, it's been pushed in. Right, and obviously, this mechanism here then allows you to that will bolt onto that section there. Or if you want to use a camera mount, then you can just thread that onto that quarter inch part and end there. So that's a nice little uh, multi-function head on that. So that's the tripods. These are not bad little tripods, they're fairly light. They're, they're not robust as it was such, you know, they're, they're okay. You don't, as long as you don't abuse them, they're fine. I've never had a problem with my one anyway. Alright, so back panel, so you've got Kelvin and Lumen adjustment. And we'll turn it on. I've currently got it turned right down. So you can see the actual Kelvin adjustment there on the display. Get nice and close so you can see better. Alright, so that's what it does. 5, 6, up to 3, 2. And this is the intensity, so if I turn this up, I should start lighting my bench, which you may or may not be able to see. And uh, if I change the white balance on that. And if I turn my bench lighting off on the more videoing light, three of them along here. So this is just this one light here now and that's full intensity and you can see it's pretty bright on the panel and that's 5600 Kelvin. It's dimmer than my normal lights. My normal lights are brighter than this but the idea of this is that it gives a nice subdued lighting I suppose because it's a wider panel. You can, see which, you can probably see the changing of the colours there. But that's a nice little display on the back there and you know, so it's a three vision switch so that's on to the main adapter power here, off is center off, and then left is off battery, so you can put those two batteries in there. So I think there's Sony batteries on like I can put in there. I actually do a lumen test on this too. I mustn't forget, I'll, I'll show the manual first and I'll get my lumen meter out and we'll see what it essentially says it's putting out. So here's the manual. Right, so you can read that in your own time, just pause the screen. And here's the other side. Same deal, just pause if you want to read that. So what does it say about the battery? Does it say it here? NPF series batteries, well NP hyphen F. Yeah. Alright. That's the battery type which it takes if you want to use those. Now, I think those are actually the same batteries as my yeah, my bench lights here when I'm using my normal recording. It's the same battery it's supposed to take. 
at least the, the holders look identical so I think it will be the same one so I don't actually have any of those batteries so I can't actually say whether it'll work or not never tried anyway let's get a lumen meter out and we'll see what it actually does okay so here's my lux meter here um, it measures in lux not lumen I think there's a difference between the two I'm not quite sure what it is it's probably some calculation I think it might be based on distance I think lux was based at a certain distance or something I'm not sure I can't I did read about it once I can't remember now anyway so my bench lighting is doing two and a half thousand lux if you want to look at it that way um, it's not even turning right up it can go brighter so if I give you an example I'll turn this up some more I'll turn this one up oh I'll just overload my power supply so yeah it's like five thousand I'm getting it's starting to cut out there four and a half thousand so I don't normally turn it right up as you can see I can get about four and a half thousand lux on my bench with these lights here but my power supply is not really up to it as you saw Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on and we'll put it about the same height as one of these. Actually, I'll turn, I'll turn two of these off and we'll just have one of my other lights on. Now, this does have a diffuser on it. It's got a white and an orange diffuser on the bottom there. Now, I don't have to try and get a nicer, kind of more natural light out of it. Um, but actually, it's got no diffuser. It's got LEDs and a, and a diffuser. Yeah, this, is, this diffuser I've got on there like this. Half of, an, half of the diffuser, just cut it in half. Normally, it covers the whole width, but I didn't want the whole thing changed. So I did partial colour. And I, I think it works okay in my videos. I mean, I, I think it just gave a, a better skin tone instead of washing it out a little bit. Anyway, that's not about these lights, it's about this light. So, this is one light turned all the way up. I should put this directly underneath it. So, one light is, you know, 2600 lux, okay? Turned all the way up. So, I'll turn it off. I'll put this directly in the same place, directly underneath. We'll turn it on. We'll turn it all the way up. Put it at the same height as my other light. And that's doing 1600 or so. You can see that on camera. There you go. Right, it's about 1600. If I change the color temperature, as I mix it, it actually gets brighter towards the middle of the mixing because obviously it's, that's all the LEDs on. So if I do all of the, you know, so it goes to 5600 Kelvin, that's 1500. If we go right down to 3200, it's about 1380 or so minutes. Okay, was it spec? Say it's 1400 on that. I think that's what it said. Uh, 16, so 1650. So yeah, we'll do it. I mean, pretty much. I mean, this is at this distance. I'm not quite sure of the. There must probably be some kind of specification that states what distance should be from the light meter. Um, I can tell you, hopefully. I don't know what the tape measure is. I was going to tell you exactly what the distance is. I have this really. It's a bit, it's a bit short. <laughs> it's estimate, shall we? One, two, three. Yeah, it's about 65 centimetres. Time will tell how good they are. I'll be videoing them, using them, and we'll see how it goes. Let's see what's in here. Okay. So these are just some rolls of film, all right? Um, it's a plastic sheet. I got these as a cover. Oh, I forgot to do something. I forgot, I'll be right back. So I've got this as a cover, or potential cover, for um, LED displays. Now the reason I actually got this was for the my subscriber counter over there, which I'd forgotten to turn on previously. I've turned it on now, so you can probably see it going off in the background there. Hope you can see it. And because it's just bare LED, I actually wanted to put something over them to like filter them a little bit, so you get clearer text, you put something there. So I've actually got this film here, which is supposed to be self-adhesive, so the idea is that um, you're going to stick it over the surface you want and it's supposed to filter it. So I've got some red-ish, it's like a metallic actually, it's, more like, it's actually meant for car headlamps and stuff like that, strangely. Um, I guess it's legal in China. And I've also got a green. I've ordered some other ones too, I think. Pretty sure I did. Um, and yeah, it's just very, very translucent green. You probably can't see it from me. I'll show it on the bench view on the camera. So I'll look at these shortly. And I'll even probably stick some on and see how it looks on the actual uh, display when I have it up on the bench there. 
Okay, so we've got these films. Now, this is my subscriber count, as you can see. As soon as I can see the subscriber count a little bit better. It's going to go grainy now, sorry about that. So the idea of these films is that you can put it over the display and actually improve the um, the contrast of the display. The problem with these kinds of things is you, you can see the dots quite easily and reduces the effectiveness of, of the effect. No, it doesn't look as good. So I thought I'd try some of this. Does that look better or worse? What do you reckon? It's not really dark enough, I want it darker than that. I mean, it is definitely better. Now you can probably see on camera, it looks, it looks a lot better. This is like a mirrored effect though. Now I did actually have some stuff ages ago. Oh, a year or so ago I bought some. But I can't find it now. It was non-reflective, like this is, this is like a metallic effect. This is self-adhesive too. But the other stuff wasn't adhesive or anything like that. It was big sheets, you know, maybe 25 centimeters square sheets, I think, something like that. Yeah, so those are actually really good because they're nice and dark. Focus. Focus. I don't know what's happened to that film. It would have probably been um, better because it's, it's darker. This was not that dark. Um, I'll try and show you again through, looking through it, and you can see. It's not that dark. Right? Um, seems more reflective on one side than the other, actually. It's kind of what I want. I'm just trying to increase the contrast on display and so you're not just seeing the, the bare front of the LED segments, you know. That's what I was planning on. We'll see. You know, I've got a green one here as well. I thought, well, I'll get some different colours. If I'm using like an, a green uh, LED display instead of red, then you want greens and those, don't you? So, same deal. Yeah. I know it's also quite bad. Turn those lights off again. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, you're not sh green and red doesn't really like go so well. Should use the same colour. Well, that does feel very quite well, I think. But the red's darker, and that's what I wanted. Right, let's see what's in here. My tab was very wobbly. I haven't got any bracing on it. It's just four legs. There's no bracing. I need to actually do that. I was waiting to see if I actually continue with this setup or not. Ah, excellent. So I'm waiting for some bits. Still, this is for a project. I'm going to be doing this 18650 batteries. Weight-wise, yeah, they feel about right. Don't feel too light. Should go and weigh one actually. So it's a uh, yeah. I'll show you on a bench anyway, it's a Samsung 18650 INR 18650 30Q. I don't think these are protected, I think they're just straight normal cells. I've got 10 of those. Now these are for the project for the audio control real-time spectrum analyzer, which I'm going to be converting on power supply stuff, and I mentioned it in the last mailbag. So this is all part of that project. So I'll, I'll weigh one of these and we'll do some comparisons as well. So someone's bound to have information about the weights of the batteries and how it relates to the quality. I know the Gemini, the lighter the battery is, the worse the quality is. You know, the lower the capacity sort of thing. How tightly it's wound inside and that sort of stuff. So I'll get some ways of it. I've also got some other 18650s in my drawer here, so I'll probably do a comparison between the two as well. I won't do any actual charging, discharging tests, so I'll just check the weights. That'll do for now. So there they are. Right, well, so that's what I've actually got. Now these weighed 44 and a half grams each. Within a little bit, I mean, it's basically one. I think one's sort of rounded to 44, one said 45, or three then 45, something like that. But the scale doesn't actually have a resolution of less than one gram anyway, so it's only one gram resolution. Now, I didn't test these ones, so I thought, well, these are all exactly the same basically. And these are the ones I've already have. These also weigh the same amount. These are 2600 milliamp hours, and these don't actually specify what they are. I think these are supposed to be three thousands, but they weigh the same amount. Two six three Q. So I think these are supposed to be three thousand. Weight wise, they're basically well, they're identical to the ones we've already got, and they seem okay. Maybe someone has got experience with these kinds of um, batteries knows, you know, what weights you should expect from a decent quality one versus a not so good one. I think I've seen some videos on it somewhere. Someone has done something like that. I can't believe it was now. Maybe it's worth commenting on that. These will weigh 45 grams. Time will tell if they're any good. Obviously there's links down in the description for that as well. Down, down below there's always links. Well, almost always links. If I've got a link to put in, I'll put it down there.